Hello my fellow Christian fiction lovers, welcome to another video. Today I am going to be reviewing a book that I truly had no expectations for and it completely blew me away with how much I loved it and how much I want you guys to read it. So that is why I'm going to be talking about it today. And that book is How the Light Gets In by Jelena Petersheim. Feel free to tell me if I am pronouncing that incorrectly in the comments. And this book I got in a $5 fiction sale from Tyndale, picked it out because I liked the description, saw it was a Ruth retelling, and I love the narrative of Ruth in the Bible, one of my favorites. And I had very few expectations and I just really hoped that the author did the story of Ruth justice. And it was a different retelling, I will say that. It is not plot point for plot point what it is in the Bible, not at all, but it has the same gist to it and I really appreciated that. I liked how it was different enough to be its own story but similar enough to see the threads of parallelism between the Bible and the fictional story. But anyway, let's get into it. <laughs> um, we open on the main character Ruth, she's the only one with the same name. Ruth and her two daughters are in Wisconsin at Ruth's husband's funeral. He was killed in a bombing in Afghanistan and they're burying him in Wisconsin. She is currently staying in Wisconsin in a Mennonite community that her husband had grown up in and she's staying with her husband's cousin and her mother-in-law and she gets to know both of them throughout the story and basically the whole premise is she is grieving the loss of her husband but we also see how she felt like she had already lost him in a sense just because of the way their relationship and the dynamic had been up to the point when he had left for Afghanistan and so we have this this grieving woman who is also a mother trying to figure out how to be a single parent and then interspersed throughout kind of the first part of this book are love letters between Ruth and Chandler, her late husband. And we see how their love story grows and then kind of fizzles out and gets to the point where Ruth is just like, I don't even know you anymore. And that's who she is as she grieves. And it's so interesting, that dynamic. And then she also gets to know her mother-in-law and really bond with her. And she gets to know her husband's cousin, Elam. Again, not sure I'm saying that right. It could be Elam or, I think it's Elam. So that's just the way I'm gonna say it. And Elam is very shy and quiet and he has a hard time like talking to new people. He doesn't have a speech deformity, but it's like, he just has trouble getting the words out sometimes. He, we get parts of the book from his perspective. And yeah, it's just basically about that. And there are two massive plot twists in this book. I will not give away what they are, but I think roughly around, okay, you get about a third, maybe a quarter into the book, and there's a pretty big plot twist. And then at the very, very end of the book, there is a massive plot twist that literally had me just sitting in my living room, like, questioning reality for a solid five minutes. It had no business being so shocking, yet it was. I, I mean, seriously, I was just sitting there like, you're telling me that... I'm not going to say it because I don't, don't want to spoil it, but it was the biggest and best plot twist I have ever read. Not gonna say it was the best because it truly hurt my heart. It it did. The the last couple of chapters are just so hard and emotionally gripping. And okay, let's get into some more analyzation of the book. This book deals with some very emotionally challenging things. Like there are a lot of delicate topics in here and there are certain plot points and decisions that Ruth has to make that I was very like, where is this gonna go? Like, how is this gonna stay morally right? Like, this situation? And she ended up making the right choices-ish. There were times I was like, no, you should have done that. But based on the story, she did make the right choices. And so those delicate topics were handled in a delicate manner, 
yet the decisions made sense and the decisions impacted the story in wonderful ways. Towards the end of the book, she makes this one really big decision, and you will know what it is if you read it, that I disagreed with it at first, but then you keep reading and you kind of see how she grows into this decision and knowing it's the right thing, the right choice, despite some things that could have said otherwise. There's a lot of things to me that just kind of leave it open to interpretation of what happens between two characters in the book and, well, between Ruth and another character specifically. And I really appreciated that, that it was kind of just open to interpretation. And I know how I resolved it in my mind, but a different reader could resolve it differently in their mind. And the author probably has her own interpretation of how she wrote the story, obviously. And I just kind of liked that it was up to the reader to fill in some of the holes and think maybe it ended this way with them or maybe it turned out that way like maybe she stuck to her original word or maybe she didn't like i don't know we don't know and that's very vague but i refuse to give you guys spoilers because i want you to read it so badly <laughs> and then i think the final thing i want to say about this book is that the way love is written in like God's love, romantic love, motherly love, healing love, like redemptive love, all sorts of different love written into the book. That theme is just so well embraced and well fleshed out in the story and it does a good job of just explaining what love is without actually telling you what love is. It really shows you through the decisions of the characters and through the patience that they express and that theme is just so well done and it's woven into the story in a phenomenal way. I love it. It's the best book I've read so far this year and it'll probably be talked about in other videos. That's how much I love it. So I don't have anything that I really want to, I have to say about this book. Like I don't have a critique of it and lately I've been trying to find at least one critique per book because nothing, no, nothing written is perfect. And that's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to try and think of something bad to say for the sake of the video. That's silly. It's, it's a five-star review for a reason. So those are my thoughts on How the Light Gets In by Jelena Petersheim. Let me know if you've read it, if you want to read it now. If you don't, I failed as a Christian booktuber. I did. I'm kidding. Uh, Chat with me in the comments about it. I would love to know your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, don't forget to give it a like. And if you want to see more content like this, go ahead and subscribe. And I will see you in my next video, whatever that is. Until then, bye!